Good morning, Turlock High School, class of 2021. It's great to be with you guys today, even though we really miss you and wish you guys were here on campus with us. So we can't wait till that happens and you guys are back here. There's some important information we want to share with you. So as this video goes forward, you'll see all of your counselors popping up with some important information. So make sure you stay tuned with us. The important information we want to share with you, um, starting with college uh, and graduation stuff. So it's real important for all of us to make sure that we go over to Aries and pull up our transcript. Typically, we do this for you. You're in class. We, we bring the transcript over, and it's real easy. So we apologize. The way it, we have to do it the way we, we are right now. But please pull up the transcript on Aries. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you will see your credits and all the totals. And you want to look at the completed column. On the bottom, you should be at a minimum of 170 credits. Okay, some of you might be a little bit more, 180, 190. But some of you are going to be like 160, 165 or less. So we want to make sure whether we are at a minimum of 170. If you're not and you have not already talked to your counselor, you need to do so immediately. And we're, we're human. Sometimes we make mistakes and we might have not caught that already. Um, status reports should have been sent out already. So some of you will have them soon and some, over, some of you already have them. On there, it indicates what credits you're short um, and what you need to make up. For those of you that are planning on going to a four-year college straight out of high school, you need to make sure that you have received or earned a C or better on all of your college prep classes. If you have not, again, contact your counselor to, to come up with a plan in order to get that fixed. For those of you that had Ds or Fs, same thing, you need to make sure you're contacting your counselor so that you could go over and make sure that you have a plan moving forward. In order to graduate, you need to be at, at 230 credits, okay? So 230 credits is our target, and a minimum of 170 starting the school year is what we need. If you have questions, if you have not come up with a plan and you are short, again, call or email your, your counselor immediately. Hi seniors, I'm here to talk to you about the State Seal of Biliteracy. The State Seal of Biliteracy is a program you could be eligible for if you are proficient in English in another language. You have to be a senior to apply and there are a couple of other requirements. You have to have earned at least a 2.0 in all of your English classes. You have to have taken or passed the AP test if it pertains to a language. Um, or have taken four years of a foreign language here at, here at Turlock High with a 3.0 GPA. Um, you can also show proficiency in another language by taking the SAT for that language and scoring a 600 or higher. Uh, to show proficiency for English, you have to have taken the CASP, which is a test we take at the end of your junior year. Because we were doing distance learning last spring and none of our juniors had the chance to take the CASP, the state is looking for other requirements to measure your proficiency in English. So I've had a lot of students reach out to me um, and ask me what are the requirements or if they're eligible. I'm waiting on getting some of that information. So once I know what the state is using exactly to measure your proficiency in English, I will let you know. But if you still have questions, you can reach out to me, Mrs. Ariola, by email or uh, by calling the Turlock High School office and asking for me. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm going to talk to you guys about the uh, two public university systems in California. Um, on one side we have the University of California, commonly referred to as UC, and on the other side we have the CSU campuses or the California State University System. Um, they are both very accessible to um, most students as long as you meet certain requirements. They're, they're spread out all over California, which is kind of nice in case you want to get out of Turlock. Okay, so the differences between the UC system and the CSU system um, are, they're actually a little bit kind of subtle. Um, they both accept um, the top students from, uh, from California. The, uni the UC will um, accept the top 9% of California graduates, um, and while the CSU campus accepts the top 33%. 
Um, they uh, both turn out a lot of our uh, state's college graduates. Um, one thing that you'll notice, though, is that there are 23 CSU campuses, and, and there are only 10 UC campuses. Um, the cost is similar. UC is going to be a little bit more, from thirty to thirty-six thousand dollars per year, on average, and the use, the CSU is twenty to twenty to thirty thousand on average. Um, either way, they're both a lot of money. So don't look at the sticker price right now because you're going to be applying for financial aid later on. Um, so that's something that we don't worry about until we have to. Um, the uh, the requirements for getting into UC are going to be a little bit more stringent. They require that you have at least a 3.0 GPA, and that would be the very bare minimum. Um, a lot of times with some of the more um, uh, competitive schools like UC Berkeley or UCLA, you're going to be needing a GPA of 4.0 or better. Um, CSU campuses can be a little more lenient when it comes to GPA with a 2.0 or 2 as, as the very bare bones minimum. Um, However, if you're looking to get into uh, one of the more popular schools, such as, uh, like, say, San Diego State or Cal Poly, again, you're going to be wanting to have a very, uh, very competitive GPA uh, closer to that 4.0 or above range. Um, we are lucky in that we have CSU Stanislaus right here in town and then UC Merced, which is right in our backyard a few miles down the road. So with those two campuses, I can tell you that they actually enjoy accepting students from Turlock. They think we're pretty cool. Um, and so they really want to give us a, an opportunity, get, give you guys the opportunity for higher education. So um, I definitely encourage you to apply to those schools. Um, the the uh, applications are fairly straightforward. They're online. Um, CSU is simply putting in your, uh, your grades and answering a few questions about yourself. Um, and then typically they require the SAT, but this year they are not going to need, they're not going to require it at all. Um, they aren't even going to look at it as, as one of the factors for admission. UC um, has a little bit more comprehensive uh, application in that they ask you a lot of questions about yourself and you have to, you get to write about yourself a little bit and really kind of um, let them know who you are and what you're going to bring to their school. Um, they also um, typically require the SAT or the ACT. However, this year uh, they are not requiring it at all. Um, if you put a test score on there, it'll be there. They might look at it, but it's not going to factor in um, whether, that, whether you get in or not. That just does not weigh in on the admissions decisions this year. Um, and so, uh, so definitely, you know, that's something that you don't have to worry about, um, which is a good thing because uh, the SATs and ACTs we keep getting canceled. So you don't have the opportunity, so don't worry about it. We're just going to get those applications in. Um, so next, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you need to do while you're in high school in order to meet the requirements for uh, for these four-year universities. Now this is all review, these A through G requirements. I'm going to go over them quickly because we've been actually talking to you guys about this since we visited your junior high schools all those years ago. Um, so the A through G requirements, honestly that's most of the classes that you've been taking. Um, English, history, math, science, languages other than English and art are all in those um, are all the A through G requirements. You have to um, earn C's or better in those classes. If you had a D, then it's something that you would have to make up and repeat and get a C or better if you wanted to apply to, say, CSU Stanislaus. Um, even the electives that you take are mostly college prep. So the, the biggest factors when you are reviewing your transcript, you want to say, am I, am I CSU eligible, is you want to be looking to make sure that one, you got C's or better, two, that you have um, a, a language other than English um, on your schedule or on your transcript that is the second year or higher. So S Spanish two, Spanish three, Spanish for Spanish speakers, all of those would count. 
Um, and then also that you've made it through at least Math 3, or you are in, enrolled in Math 3 this year as a senior. Um, otherwise, you know, you guys should be, at least have taken almost all of the classes. If you have any questions, we want you to make sure and reach out to your counselor, set up a meeting, send an email, make a phone call. We're available all those different ways. Hey guys, okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about additional options. So what if you don't wanna go straight to a four-year university right after high school? Um, so we've talked about UCs, we talked about CSUs. I wanna go ahead and give you a few more options um, to consider, okay? So I'm gonna talk about California Community Colleges, um, other, otherwise known as JCs or junior colleges. So there's a total of 116 community colleges spread out throughout the state of California. Um, we have two very nearby. Modesto Junior College and Merced College. Um, there's a, a couple others in the area, one being Columbia College and then one in uh, Stockton. Um, we know that for commu California Community Colleges or JCs. Just because you hear the word junior college, it doesn't mean that it's anything less than. Um, you, the academic rigor will be exactly the same, if not more sometimes, than you know, going straight to a four-year university, whether it be a CSU or a UC. Um, keep in mind that California community colleges or junior colleges will accept 100% of high school graduates. Um, there's a wide range of academic and vocational programs that you can choose from, and I'll go ahead and talk about those in just a little bit. The first two years now are tuition free, completely free of charge, as long as you complete the FAFSA, so that's the, the free application for federal student aid, or the DREAM Act application, and that you attend full time. So full time at a California community college is a minimum of 12 units. So um, as long as you meet those requirements, you will get the first two years completely free of tuition. Um, so that's a great bang for your buck if you're considering um, JCs, okay? Some options at the community college, as I mentioned, let's start with vocational programs. If you're interested in doing what we call these kind of short careers, sometimes you can finish these in a year to six months to 18 months, just depending on what you want to do. For example, they have anything from welding to vet tech, EMTs, fire science, um, some CNA programs, uh, mechanics. So really a, an array of different uh, options for students who maybe just want to go in, get a certification of some sort, go out straight to work. Um, so again, that's something to keep in mind. Another option is an AA or Associate of Arts or an AS degree, Associate of Science degree. So these are two-year degrees. Typically takes around two years to complete. These can be in any different, um, any academic area. So you can get an AA in business or AS in science. So just depending on what you wanna do, um, these are many degrees, if you would. Um, the most popular option, I think, for most students choosing to go straight to a community college would be to transfer to a four-year university. So let's say that you're a student who maybe at high school didn't do so well in math. Math three came around, second semester, let's say you got a D. So you technically didn't meet those A through G requirements that we talk about for UC or CSU admission. So one great option is for you to go to a community college, take the classes that you need to, and then transfer out. So really we look at you almost splitting your degree um, and starting off at the community college, but ending up at a four-year university, whether that be a CSU or a UC. Um, many, most universities now have what are called TAG agreements or transfer admission guarantee. I know the, the UC system for sure. So this basically means that let's say you wanna go to UC Davis, but you know you missed a requirement for whatever reason. You would start off at Modesto Junior College, you're gonna take the classes that you need, you're gonna sign this agreement that says, after I complete these specific requirements, and if I meet the specific GPA, then you will be guaranteed a spot into that university as a transfer student. So typically, again, going to uh, community colleges and then transferring to four-year universities, whether at BCSU or UC, um, is a great option. Keep in mind also how much money you're gonna save, uh, given those first two years tuition free at community colleges. So the vocational programs that are available, the AA or AS degrees, and then of course the transfer options to um, going straight to a four-year university. There are now a couple of community colleges who have actual bachelor's degree options. You can get a degree at these universities. Um, we know that right now, Modesto Junior College has a respiratory therapy uh, bachelor's degree available, 
And so that's just one of the local ones. There are a number of other programs available throughout the state. So make sure that if you're considering community college that you talk to us and we'll guide you more about um, the options for that, okay? Let's also talk a little bit about military. So, you know, you don't have to go to a four-year university. You don't have to go to a community college. Um, you can choose the military. We have a great program in JROTC where a lot of our students kind of get a head start to going into the military. We also have a number of recruiters that we work with very closely um, that come in to give you information if that's something that you're interested in. Um, keep in mind that if you want to go into the military, there's a test that you do have to take. It's called the ASVAB. This is a military entrance exam that is used to um, essentially qualify you for uh, different branches based on um, academic level, so to speak, okay? So that is um, a test that is required for you to take and consider taking that junior year for sure and then you can take it multiple times if you need to. Um, again, required for students wanting to join the military. Also want to talk a little bit about the college application deadline. So you've heard information about the different schools and the different options. So for the UC system, um, the application is open now. Opened August 1st. You can't submit it. You can start working on that application but cannot submit until after November 1st. So you're going to have that window from November 1st all the way through November 30th for the UC application. CSU applications, you can't access them yet. So they will not be available until after October 1st. So for the CSU system, you have from October 1st all the way through November 30th. So keep in mind, November 30th is that deadline for both of these major university systems, both UC and CSU, okay? Um, the private schools. So private schools, which is why we say, come and talk to us about that um, and do your research because these schools just vary. They typically, most of them open August 1st. They use the Common app to um, complete the applications, but the deadlines vary. So it's very important that you check in with us and or you do your research to know when you need to submit those applications and that you don't miss the deadline. And then community colleges, um, they vary. You know, it just depends on the college, but for the most part, it's from October and on. So we have students who've applied to community colleges in March. Not that I'm encouraging that, but you have that much time and that flexibility to be able to do so. And obviously the biggest reasons why we want you to apply early on when they do open is so that you can get the first pick of classes if possible, okay? So just keep in mind those deadlines. I know information is gonna go out there about specifically when those are in workshop. Um, Mrs. Cole will talk about that in more detail as we get closer to those workshops, okay? Now, obviously you have all of these options, but how are you going to pay for them? I mean, college, let's be honest, it's expensive. So we're going to um, show you just a little brief clip about what some options are to pay for college and then Mrs. Cole will talk to you guys in more detail and we'll help you and kind of guide you through that application process for that financial aid application um, and or the, the DREAM Act application, okay? So you want to go to college or career school. Maybe you started saving early. Maybe you'll discover some buried treasure, but more likely you'll need another plan. So if paying for college is going to fall on your shoulders, the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid is the best place to turn for assistance. I bet you didn't know that we're the largest provider of grants, loans, and work-study funds, all of which are easy to apply for. And when it is time to apply for aid, head to your favorite spot to complete the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. Each October, a new FAFSA is available for the next school year, and completing it is free when you go to the official website, fafsa.gov. Your selected colleges will use the information on your FAFSA to figure out how much aid you'll get, so make sure your info is accurate. But if you need to, you can go back and make some changes. If you get a grant or work-study job, congrats, you won't have to pay the money back. However, a federal loan is borrowed money, and you'll need to promise to repay it. Remember to borrow only what you need because a federal student loan is a real loan. Just like with a car or home loan, it's important that you understand what you're agreeing to. Although college, financial aid, and the prospect of an instant noodle diet can be a little overwhelming, you'll be putting yourself on the path to success when you take the time to plan out your options and let the Office of Federal Student Aid help you along the way. If you have questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. 
All right, I'm Mrs. Cole, and I know Mrs. Um, Niebla just talked a little bit about financial aid. I just wanna reassure you that I will be back to talk to you in greater detail about financial aid. We will have a full presentation about it, and we will have a financial aid evening to help you through that process. Um, so if you're nervous about that, again, there's gonna be more support coming up. Um, I wanna talk to you about the senior packet that came home. It has all of the critical information the dates and deadlines that you need to keep track of this year because sometimes it can feel a little bit overwhelming. So we wanna make sure we're supporting you and helping to keep organized and each step of the way that you need help, we will be here. Um, so one of the pages in that packet that you're gonna find is a cardstock. It's a little bit thicker paper and that's a piece of paper that you're gonna to wanna to keep with you this entire year. Um, you wanna keep it in a safe place anytime you are signing on for an application workshop or something with MJC or financial aid, you're gonna to wanna to use that same cardstock because it has a lot of valuable information. On the front side, it has all the really critical deadlines to keep track of throughout the year. So that's, again, something that you're gonna to wanna to refer to regularly to make sure you are um, on track. On the back side, you're gonna see a lot of um, accounts and it, again, this can maybe seem a little overwhelming, but I promise you when we take it step by step, it will make a lot more sense. Um, as you in, um, embark on this process of applying for different programs, especially if you're undecided and maybe you're applying to a CSU here, a UC, and a junior college, so you're keeping your option open, options open, you will have multiple usernames and passwords. You will have multiple username and passwords for your financial aid, um, for your parents' financial aid, which is required. Again, your different accounts, your emails, your um, MJC has multiple accounts that you have to create. So you want to keep all of your usernames and passwords in one place. If you choose to use this card stack, it is very, very helpful because I promise you, you will not be able to use the same username and password for each of those accounts. Um, they block you from doing that. They each have different requirements, so you will have to use different ones. So you wanna make sure you have a place to track all of them so that you can refer back to them because you will need to access them multiple times throughout the year. Um, on the front of the cardstock, you will find a QR code and you're also gonna find a link in this presentation for the senior survey. This is incredibly important that you fill this out. This is how we know what workshops you want to be invited to and what you want to sign up for. We are asking that each senior sign up for a minimum of one workshop. And that is so if you're undecided, we can give you information about the different programs. Um, but again, any, any university you're interested, if you're interested in CSU, you're going to want to sign up for that application workshop. The UC, you're going to want to sign up for that one. So um, junior college, whether you're going to Merced or MJC, um, please sign up for all of the different um, programs that you're interested in so we can make sure to include you and invite you to those virtual workshops we'll be providing this year. Um, again, if you're undecided, we have MJC that will be talking about their CTE programs. If you're looking at apprenticeship programs, we'll have um, a workshop for that. We will have lots of workshops with military recruiters. So please make sure that you, you fill out that survey carefully and you put some thought into it because that's how we will be communicating with you. Um, again, there's a lot of great information, including scholarships, which will be coming up, um, the financial aid, your different options. And so um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. So how can you keep up with all of this information? Um, now that you're distance learning, we have some old ways that we've used for you to keep up with information, and we've also got some new things in place for you to keep up with all this information. So first of all, follow us on Remind. You can see uh, the code up there that you need to text at THS2021 81010. Um, and then you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Our Instagram is THS underscore counseling. Uh, everything that we have up and coming will be posted there. It's a great way for you to keep up. You can also have your parents follow both of those uh, so they can get all the information. Uh, we also have a new Bitmoji office. Uh, you can find that on our Turlock High School website under counseling. You could also find it on your class of 
uh, if you go there to Google Classroom, there's a separate little link to our counseling information. So you can find any information you need um, right there. So visit that often. Through our Bitmoji office, you can schedule an appointment through Calendly by pressing on our Bitmoji. Uh, it'll take you straight to our calendar. You can schedule any time you would like to meet with us and it automatically sends you a Zoom code. So it's super convenient. You can also click on our name to email us. Um, any other useful information that you may need about colleges and things like that will also be on there. So make sure that you get familiar with that and reach out to us. Uh, the Calendly links are posted here. You can copy and paste them because this is going to be posted hopefully on uh, your teacher's uh, Google Classroom. So you'll be able to just cut and paste our link and you can keep that for yourself. And then anytime you need an appointment, you can just click on it. It'll take you straight to our calendar. Super convenient. Uh, what else is happening that you need to know about? So a couple more last minute uh, things that are happening. Dual enrollment courses, they're offered through MJC and Stanislaus State um, every semester. So this semester, I think everything is already full and started, but next semester you'll have another opportunity to sign up either for an A period Stanislaus State course or a course through MJC. Um, both of these will give you college credit, so it's a great way to get a jump start on college and it's absolutely free, so, or maybe with a small, small, small fee, um, but get some college credits out of the way now uh, before you have to pay full price for them. So if you need any more information on that, you can see us, um, make an appointment with us and we can give you more information. Scholarships. So scholarships is another way to get financial aid and Ms. Cole will talk a little bit more about this uh, when she does her financial aid presentation. But just so you know, most scholarships come from our local scholarship application. It's one application that's posted in January uh, you fill the application out and it makes you eligible for about 120 local scholarships that we have. Um, it's a real simple process. Uh, the more people who apply, obviously the better. Um, and then you'll be notified at the very end of the year if you get money and it's free money that you do not have to pay back. So please apply for those when you have the opportunity. And then a few last minute survival tips. Check your emails daily. Now it's more important than ever. Um, obviously, with distance learning, this is the way we have to get a hold of you. Uh, we can call you also, but email is probably going to be the first mode of communication to you guys. So please check those daily. Um, when we need to get a hold of you, that's where we're going to go. Uh, all your usernames and passwords. Miss Cole created that awesome card stock for you that you should be getting any day now if you haven't already gotten it. Please, please take that with you to all workshops. Store all your usernames and passwords on there and it's going to be something that you need to keep safe and not lose, okay? You're gonna use it a lot. Also, like I said prior, follow us on all social media, Remind, all the information you're gonna need is gonna be posted there. And then make appointments with us anytime you need anything. Um, just because you're distance learning does not mean that things have to be any different. We still can meet with you at any time that you need. If you have questions, we're here for you. And uh, we miss you guys, and we hope to see you on campus very, very soon. Uh, this has been a tough year for all of us, and we're hoping that just because you're distance learning that you know that you're not going to be missing out on any of the college information or any important dates and deadlines. We are going to make sure you get that information, and if for some reason you're unsure about something, please reach out to us. We're here for you. Thank you.